I guess we're keeping discussing the same topic. Thank you, Aliyah, for introducing each practice. Is. Maybe it's going to make my life easier here. Maybe harder, never know. Uh, thank you, Adam and Thomas, for all the support for, in the name of uh, for Halliburton Forest for, for all the support, my text as well, and Professor Rasul for, uh, yeah, helping me and giving me the opportunity to work in this project. So I already mentioned the, the past uh, uh, presentation, American beach is a common species in the, Aster, the Eastern and Southern Ontario. Uh, currently it's being decaying because of beach bark disease. That's as I already mentioned is a, a, a mix between a, a scale and a fungi. Uh, it's pretty, the, tr the treatments that they are in, in the literature are kind of uh, focused on uh, beach uh, stand control. So reducing the amount of beach in the stands. Uh, but there is one hard point is that they have like a high vegetative reproduction. And uh, finally, one important thing for our study is that beach is commonly association, associated with uh, sugar maple. Our study location was Halliburton Forest. They, it's a private company that owns around 40,000 hectares in the Great Lakes and Lawrence. They are mostly dominated by uh, hard, tolerant hardwood trees. So we have some goals in our studies and is that uh, basic collect relevant data of beach stands in Halliburton Forest and calibrate a climate sensitive forest growth and management model. It's called 3PG. Simulate options for American beach and sugar maple stands, in, stands sorry, including do nothing, drift and thinnings intensities and uh, under soil control. We are also going to evaluate these strategies by conducing a cost benefits analysis of discounted eco economic figures. And finally, simulate the response of both species for climate change scenarios. So for the methodology uh, for this project, we are considering uh, the overstory and, um, and understory. For overstory is all the trees with more than 10 centimeters of DBH. Uh, the plots are 400 square meters and we collected the DBH species and tree height for this, for this product. And then uh, we have uh, for understory, this is important, it's just everything that's above two meters of high and less than 10 centimeters of DBH. We didn't collect uh, any uh, other information for a smaller uh, sapling. And then uh, the control plot, the, sorry, the understar plots were 10 by 10 inside the, 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 the 400 square meters plot. Okay, so we have the triple G here, the model. Uh, it is it's a physiological process predicting growth. Initially was designed in 97, uh, focusing the, the green part that you see in the middle, NPP, and uh, the allocation of this to the root system, foliage, and steam. Uh, stem, sorry. And uh, it was basically calculating the, the photosynthesis and allocating this into biomass, so carbon, basically. Uh, we are using a mixed version of 3PG. That's great because we can use uh, uh, more than one species. The original one was just one. And also you can predict uh, an even age situation. So you can enter information with more than one age in the, in the, in the model. Uh, the model has around 87 parameters. Uh, so climate, temperature, uh, precipitation, and most of them are, are focused on species. So uh, quantum efficiency, the allocation to uh, of the NPP to the roots or to the to the foliage, and uh, this is the the model uses the the uh, everything that is in green on the bottom to allocate this to the stem. So DBH and tree height is calculated based on the the biomass. Uh, unfortunately, it's not just we have the model. Okay, let's run for a maple and beach and see what's happening. We need to calibrate the model. And uh, the calibration, we use uh, the, the Bayesian methodology for both species separately. And then it's basically, in a simple way, Bayesian is connects elements by probability. So we have our prior beliefs, we have a new information, and then we have uh, future beliefs. Uh, this uses a, a likelihood function. And then uh, inside the calibration, we use the Markov chain of Monte Carlo uh, to calculate this likelihood. 
and we run uh, 10,000 interactions, uh, three chains. Uh, and to help us in the calibration, we used the uh, part of the, 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 the measurements for a permanent plot from the, the mega plot uh, that's in Halliburton. It's, uh, in theory, is not being managed for 100 years. So they start in 2009, if I'm not wrong. They have measurements every five years or so. So we use these as a, a, as a permanent plot to have at least two times in the uh, different times, the measurements for the same plot. Okay, so for the simulations we have, uh, we collect data of almost a hundred plots, but we are, we, for this, we are just simulating four plots or so they are four real plots in, in Halliburton. And then we focus our, our inventory basically in beach and maple stands. So for plot, what you're calling here, plot one is beach dominant, understory and overstory. Beach, uh, plot two is beach dominant, overstory, and maple dominant, understory. Plot three is uh, maple dominant, overstory, and beach understory. And the four I called mix is like 6% maple, 40% beach for uh, over and understory. For the treatments, we are going to have one that's do nothing, just run the model for 150 years and see the results. Uh, we have a 33% of uh, thinning uh, focus on beach, but in, in of course, in the maple stand, the the uh, the thinning is going to occur as well. We have a, a more intensive thinning that's 90% in year zero. So in 2024, enter and remove 90% of the, the overstore of beach. And the final one, we, we included uh, understore control that for this study, we are considered as 82% of efficiency in the year zero for understory control beach. Uh, for the climate change, we have some scenarios. We are just considering the SSP2 and SSP5 for that's a shared socioeconomical pathway is a way that we predict that the, the, the world is going to develop. Uh, in general, lines SP, SSP5 is uh, uh, fossil fuel based, and uh, but we, with reduction, we are going to reduce the inequality in the world. And the SSP3 and 4, they, they, they are going to keep inequality or even higher. So we choose SSP5 and SSP2. This is kind of middle of the road between all the scenarios. So a little bit of, we are going to have some inequality in the world, but uh, in, in general lines, we are going to keep the same path and developing. We use the model CMIP6 and uh, our red correct bias for, for Canada using uh, that Canadian model. And then we are going to do 150 years just for do nothing. We're not doing treatments for the climate change scenarios. And lastly, for the method methodology, it's uh, our econometric uh, result is going to be NPV is going to be the NPV of stock in time T, future, minus NPV of stock in time zero. So we are considering there as 2024. This is the inventory for, for the summer. Plus the NPV of thinning between the time zero and the time T. So whatever thinning happens during that period is going to be in that table as well. We are considering a discount rate of 2%, $700 for the understory control per hectare. And uh, Beachy is uh, $10 per ton and Maple is $20 per ton. This is the first results are the calibration. They are, don't look like really excited, but without these, we cannot simulate any of the of this. And also with a, a, good mo, a good calibration, we can use this to simulate in other areas, not just Halliburton. We can simulate it for uh, whatever, any place that we have a uh, beach or uh, maple, sugar maple, you can calibrate that. So you can change parameters such as like temperature or even the soil quality. This it's it's going to be used for other other place. Uh, the orange line is our our calibration results, and then the green is the sorry, the orange line is our what we input as a, a parameters. Those are the results. The green it's the calibration results. So the greener line means the, the most probability to happens in the inside of the, the calibration is the greener line. So we see that's pretty close, especially for base area, DBH and tree height, both lines are pretty close. So it means that the, the, we successfully calibrate the model. Here we have the results for sugar maple. It's, they're pretty, pretty similar in, in the, uh, in the uh, similar results. 
and now for simulation results. Uh, I know it's a lot going on this table, but let's focus on the color. So red means beach dominant stand, and then 0.9 means 90% of, uh, of beach in the stand. Green means uh, maple dominant stands. So we're, what we are doing, trying to do is uh, move from a red to green. So for the plot number one that was beach dominated understore and overstore, the best treatment that we found was the 90% thin in the first year and with understore control, both there have a similar results until the year 2064. After that, both treatments and the 33% uh, uh, thinning every 25 years, they have a kind of similar results. For the plot number two, that's beach dominant overstory and maple dominant understory, kind of have the same results, but instead of 2064, is until 2074. You have, uh, uh, we're going to see that we're reducing from 80% of, uh, of beach uh, up to down to 10% in this case. But after the year 2084, again, the 33% have the same results for, for both. We have here a plot with maple. Of course, we cannot use the 90% thinning in this case because it's, it's, uh, it's already a maple stand. And you see that both 33% uh, and we included here the understore control, they have similar results overall. But if you focus on the year 2084 and 94, you see that there are more uh, beach in the, in the, in the treatments with uh, uh, understore control. And uh, what's gonna happen there is that when you reduce the, the, the initial uh, number of, uh, of beach in the, in the stand, you have less competition. So this 18% of beach that is left after the control, they're going to grow way faster. So we need to think about this when you're applying uh, under soil control. For the mixed stand, the, the results are mostly good until the year of 2044. So 9% of beach control is good for this first uh, uh, 20 years or so. After that, the results are pretty similar. Okay, so you are already run, as mentioned, we ran an uh, uh, economic evaluation. And then, uh, unfortunately, all the understar control have the worst results economically. Seven hundred dollars. Uh, we need to remember that is one hundred fifty years of discount rate. So, you applying the understar control in the first first year, it's likely to have a, a, a bad economic result. Unfortunately, for but for the good results, we see that for most of the scenarios 90% of beach removal in the first year is the best to, uh, to do we have 2034 for plot 1 for that's 33% is better but is likely better and but overall for all the the treatments 90% is the best uh, uh, treatment to do i know that probably you're all tired of that i'm talking about modeling and net present value so Lunch is soon, but we are going to talk about climate change. Uh, it's more interesting. So green is beach and red is maple. Uh, line means the current climate. Dot means the SSP2 climate and dashes means SSP5 climate scenario. So for the SSP2, uh, SSP2 model, uh, scenario, sorry, we are going to have a decrease in four and a half percent of basal area of uh, maple in the long term. This is about 150 years, so 2,174. And I increase a 7.8% on beach uh, basal area with the, that scenario of climate change. For the SSP5, we're going to have a, a worse reduction for, for maple that's 10.6%, 10, 10 and an increase of 1.2% in, in the beach basal area. For plot two, we have uh, similar results. So for maple, it's we're going to lose five and a, Five and a half percent, and we increase of five point eight percent for beach. For the SSP five, we're going to reduce. Uh, it's going to reduce eight point one percent in maple basal area, and in, in decrease three point seven percent for beach. We have uh, for all the scenarios, for all the plots. Sorry, for the four plots is not in the presentation because all the results are pretty similar around the down to ten percent for maple and uh, up to around 0% for, for beach, kind of not changing. So basically all the, the plots have uh, reduced maple uh, productivity in the next 150 years. 
Okay, finally, for recommendations, we have that uh, intensive thinning of beach in the first year is the best uh, result overall, especially if you look at, uh, in the, the NPV, so economically is the best result. For maple, 32% of uh, thinning, it's better than uh, the doing, it's better than doing the understar control. For mixed stands, uh, it is kind of a tough situation because uh, we see that 90% is good for the beginning of the peers, like 20 or 30 years. After that, all the treatments, they have like similar response. When you open the canopy, more light, the, the, the model understand that uh, we have more water and more light, so everything go, go faster. So it was a kind of, uh, is a bit of a challenge. And for a climate change scenario, you need to be watching because uh, with reduction of uh, maple uh, basal area and increase of uh, beach area, ba basal area, sorry, probably uh, we are going to have more challenge to understand how this is going to work. And then unfortunately we're going to have less maple available. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, I'll have Adam ask a question. Or... Thanks very much, Ricardo. Um, great job. Um, I just first wanted to get um, ask you about one of your recommendations you made just at the end here. Um, maybe if you go back a slide or two. Yeah, so um, so it seems from this that if you have beach overstory, you can be successful by thinning beach. If you have maple overstory, you can be successful basically just by new on as done. From this slide, am I right in thinking that the mix stands are the going to be the biggest challenge to manage in the future? I would say so. Uh... Again, models, uh, it's a different interaction because uh, as a nonlinear, small changes in the composition can make different, like a lot of changes in the future, especially in the volume. So this uh, interaction between uh, the number of stems, like the basal area or volume, whatever you want to call it, it's in the model, understand, it's difficult for this to understand. So with the results that we have, yes, for the... Uh, Controlling the mixed stands is going to be harder than than the. The problem is the amount of uh, the one of the main problems is the amount of uh, maple that is under the understory. At least the plots that I visit, most of them have way more beach than maple. So it's a matter the the fact maybe is increasing this maple understory. In, in which way I don't know, but in, increasing maple understory can compete more with beach understory. And uh, and control the plot. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um. Just uh, one sort of clarification question, and then one shorter question. So, am I right in understanding as well from these results that basically story control is not really needed to manage beach? We should be focusing on the story manipulation. The results of the modeling, yes, is showing that because yep. uh, can be a, can be really complex and also we consider under story everything with uh, less than 10 centimeters more than two meters of high so for what the model is running yes they think with the the under story is that uh, high competition especially when the 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 uh, the number of uh, of under story is high the high competition makes this in the future 20 years reduce this number this is kind of uh, obvious if you think about the forest but the 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 model is understanding that. So basically it's a, a, a high mortality in the beginning of the period with yeah. high understory. Yeah, great. And then my last question is just um, how confident do you feel that the model was able to capture the process of beach thicket formation? I would say <laughs> confident because uh, if you look at the results here, Forget about the climate change, but like, if you think uh, the the results here, uh, and all the results that we had in basal area, we didn't see any like crazy basal area. So the model is not showing that like, oh, it's 
achieving 60 square meters per hectare. No, it's, it's uh, they have a reasonable numbers. So something between, I have a table with basal areas. Yeah, so I think the higher number that we have here is around 30 uh, square meter per hectare. This is for both species together, but so we didn't have any outliers and like, oh, it's growing too much or growing too little. And then also it's possible to make some final adjustments, especially for soil quality. We're using like a standard 0 0.5 quality that's between zero and one. So if you have like, oh, we have a cassite that's really high uh, soil quality, we can move this to 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. So you're going to have more basal area. And if you have like, oh, I have, a, I have a, like a really bad site, you can reduce this number and then decrease the base area. So it's possible to manage the, the, the volume. Great. Any other questions from the audience? Yes? Thanks. Thanks for your questions. This is the, this is the first look at something like this I've seen. I've been, we've been looking at each for many years. So this is this is um, I wanted to make a, a bit of a, a comment, a bit of a question about the distinction with what Adam asked about. No, are we okay just managing go starting? I think it may be able to look to the peak percentage slide we covered earlier. Uh, so the one prior, what was there? Right, so where we have beach, if I'm understanding this correctly, where we have a beach dominated over story, we can do a 90% thinning. But you know, we're looking at taking a couple of centuries to get to a basal dominant forest. So while managing the overstory on its own is the best economic results, it doesn't necessarily need to lead to a desired stand structure result that might have been described. Yes. Yes. Uh so money is kind of uh, depends on who is uh, investing. I understand that for a private company, it's tough to enter and doing under star control, $700 per hectare. It is, you have 40,000 hectares. I don't know, everything is not forest, but if you apply these under star control into any thousand hectares, it's insane amount of money. So for a private company, maybe it's not the best result. But maybe for, sorry, maybe for the government, I don't know, maybe they're looking for. So an important piece of context is uh, around the sort of, be curious if Aristotle is still online, but the treatments that they have been doing on Bancroft and where they have those results, mm -hmm. they've been paying for that through forestry keepers trust funding. So it's pooled money from across the province that is not coming out of stock of revenues from that same forestry. And where you were required to be doing that, it would become economical. And in fact, the French Severn has modeled that standable transition from maple dominated to each dominated a bank essentially mm -hmm. a percentage of Mm -hmm. in the absence of that. So so the economics don't work for Crown either, except in the absence of straight subsidy. So this is it's a big challenge. So which leads me to my question, I'm actually a question, <laughs> which is that can you, can you, with your understanding of the model so far, can you envision a stand that where the understory control treatment would provide an economically positive result? With the like, treatment? Yeah, like a, you know, a combination of overstory and understory compositions where that the investment is economically justified. And sorry, can you repeat that question before you answer it? Just for the people at home, they're asking. Okay, one second. <laughs> Thanks. So the question was, um, all your, your results showed that, that the understory control investment is always a net negative yes it never pays the investment never pays a return can you envision a scenario in which it would be a positive investment and you'd see uh an np a positive npv number from doing that understory control i would say that uh not only we i think we have two paths here investing in the understory control if it's not uh uh if you're using funds from the the future funds it's fine and I also uh, study a little bit of increased maple uh, regeneration, if is that economical view as well. So instead of just focus on removing the beach, uh, maybe try we can try some scenarios of uh, removing some some other sort of beach and increase the uh, maple. Maybe with some I don't know if it's possible plantation or 
how viable is that? It needs to be studied, but maybe a mix of both. Because when you reduce, at least what the model is, is the response of the model is, when you reduce a lot the, the understory of beach or can be maple as well, you have less competition. With less competition, those 18% that are left, they are going to grow. That's that's the, the, the challenge. So I don't see that just the understory is going, control is going to be the, the with this result of the model, the, the best scenario. Um, to, to, to be hypothetical about that for a second, an example that I'm aware of where it is working, that I don't think this would fly in Ontario for all sorts of ecological and social reasons, but in New Brunswick, where they have these beach thicket stands, they clear cut them, mm -hmm. they're able to chip everything and sell all the products, and then it's good terrain, easy access, and they plant them into softwood plantations. And that's net revenue in the present day, like you have enough cash generated from that harvesting activity to pay for your treatments and plantation. And then it's also has a positive NPV because the rotations are so short. Um, so maybe we should get some more red pine happening again in our, <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Question from Rasul. One sec. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Very complicated technically what you have done, but you made it. Uh, just a uh, comment on Thomas also on uh, Adam. This is not the final stage. So just two weeks ago, he managed uh, with Bayesian calibration to produce a model that works. So these are just representative stands and some scenarios that we thought it makes sense. So Ricardo has agreed to be a research uh, assistant for another three months in order to simulate the uh, other stands and other scenarios. The time is very long and you may agree, me coming from Germany, Ricardo from Brazil, we do not have the best knowledge about Canadian forestry system. <laughs> what uh, I am used to here in Germany is what uh, is called the stand development type and intervention types, like how you manage in one complete rotation your stands. I think this is something that you should communicate very well. What are the scenarios that makes for you in Halliburton more sense? And the model is ready, can simulate, I don't know, not in seconds, but maybe in one or two minutes, a lot of these scenarios. So we have the tool ready to simulate even extreme or non-realistic scenarios and see what is the outcome. But of course, as Adam mentioned, the results, I would say, plus minus 20% that you can <laughs> trust. The uncertainty is not very high. Uh, regarding the economy, we should also connect to Halliburton to see where, where are the incentives, subsidies, and compensations that, that uh, our result is economically also realistic for you. But the tool is there, and I, I could trust the model, actually. It is working here better than how we have calibrated the same model for beach forest in Europe. So your calibration result is better. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Sean. Uh, not to be contradicting my esteemed <laughs> colleagues, but uh, one should always be, you know, in a complicated model where you have dozens or, you know, close to 100 parameters and a, a complicated nonlinear structure and many, many assumptions going into it. One should be skeptical of how good these long-term projections are. Uh, and you know, the, there's a history of, of you know, particularly the, these kinds of complicated models ending up doing a pretty poor job ultimately of predicting sort of nuts and bolts growth and yield mm -hmm. uh, parameters that you really want for the economic projections. So I guess the, the question that arises, how could you better uh, you know, really, three three PG has not been used. You know, here regionally much. There's other kinds of models that 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 have been used. And how could you how could you really go forward to have more confidence in uh, these kind of growth and yield uh, uh, projections? Which was was not why the model was was initially put together. So, wow, I learned in in David Martel and Russell course that. All models are wrong. Some are useful. Yeah, that's the. I think that's what we want is to be to be a good north. Uh, one challenge that we had was uh, 
finding uh, permanent plots of beech and maple in long term. So we use uh, the the mega plot that yeah that's under your uh, lab uh, just for a short period of time. So if you want to increase the confidence, we need like a long time uh, plots with uh, results for maybe a couple of days or maybe 20, 30, 40 years, I don't know, which more data of like a uh, pass we can simulate and see like, oh, we are 5% or you're 20% off the, the, the results. And also even like that is, it's, it's challenging because uh, as a, as you mentioned, as a non-linear uh, uh, program, uh, as a non-linear model, small changes can can have like in the future uh, different results. So it's a challenge to to, to do. Okay. Any other questions in the room or online? No? Okay, I have a quick question. What's happening between the years 2094 and 2104 um, in plot four that results in that huge increase in the percentage of beach? Uh, probably is the, is the thinning of maple. Yes, because uh, when we have more than 20 centimeters of DBH, I, I, I inserted the thinning for, for maple because uh, uh, Halibert is not going to stop to harvest to thin or to harvest it for 150 years. So when is the maple was available to to be uh, to be harvested, we we did. So it is the the the, the result of the thinning that's entering the in the cash flow in the in the economic analysis. Okay. 